Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. On today's video, we're gonna do part three of our boar corral build. Uh, if you wanna know about part one and part two, I'm gonna to link to a playlist. I apologize, when we did part two, many of you weren't sure what part one was. Part one was using the tractor to clear up the creek. So I'm gonna do a playlist, so if you wanna go back and kinda of see what in the world's going on, then you can, you can do so. I didn't name the videos part one, part two, part three. But the playlist will make all that uh, clear as mud. So today, the effort is getting our posts set for the actual corral, and I've changed 16 different ways, and I think I've finally settled on something. So let me show you what I got. Well, we discussed in part one taking our gas pipe and using that as corral corners and posts, and uh, that's what I used for the edge of my, my bridge, my Bigfoot bridge, which you guys laugh about. Um, but discover just the time and effort and the material it takes to drill holes through these to put my bolts in, to put wood that I can then screw to. It just seemed like a lot of extra, extra hassle, a lot of extra effort, and a lot of material. So I thought, well, I'm just going to go ahead and then use treated 4x4 posts. So I bought a bunch of treated 4x4 posts. And I thought, well, that's a lot of money to just stick in the ground. We could use those elsewhere. Uh, I need something even sturdier. So I have foam poles that were given to me a long time ago, and I have quite a few of them. So I was saving those for some other projects. I still think I can hold back what I need for my projects elsewhere, uh, but be able to at least set my, my primary corners with foam poles, and that will really make them heavy duty. That's why we've got the tractor here. Cam and I are going to start making some holes and start setting some foam poles. <laughs> poles, went southern there for a second. We'll start setting some foam poles in the holes. Okay, so, Four primary corners. We're just doing a basic rectangle. I was trying to get all funky and said forget that. So we're going to do a primary corner here with a foam pole, and that's where I'll have a 10-foot a, uh, gate that'll swing. And then I'm still trying to figure that out as far as how I want to load, offload. Yeah, I'm going to, I think, embrace the KISS principle first and then just see how it is moving boars in and out, uh, gilts or sows here for breeding. Still just trying to figure all that out. So I don't want to do a bunch of engineering, have a bunch of money and time tied up in something that I may tear out and redo. So we'll see, see if that's logical or not. So first post will go here. We'll do another one here for the gate to contact. So 10 feet apart. We're going to go about 20 feet that way and just make a nice rectangle. So four corners we'll set first.
can hold this if you want. So what we'll do, buddy, is uh, when we go to put the boards on, I'm not just going to nail boards to the outside. We want it to the inside because if a board leans against it, he's going to knock it loose. So if I just nail to the inside of this, then I don't have anything on the inside to nail here. So what I'll do is I'll take two by fours and nail them vertically here and here. So the boards will actually be able to nail against the side of the two by fours. So there'll be an inside here and an inside there. So you'll actually see a little bit of the pole exposed, right? So that, yeah, I'll take a reciprocating saw and cut that off. But that's why this four by four post, it needs to be inset. Cause when you, when you have a board here, it needs to nail to the face of this. I'm not gonna have it terminate on the side. So that's got it pretty darn close there. Grassy ass muchachu. We got those poles set just in time. I hear a little bit of precipitation coming over the mountain. Now I'm feeling a little bit of precipitation coming over the mountain. Ooh, that's a cold rain. All right, well, the rain will keep me from jabbering too much, y'all. But the plan is, uh, obviously, you got the pole set. Four by four in the middle. Didn't need to do a telephone pole there. Our primary poles... Uh, are the telephone poles. This back corner pole will be where we mount our 10 foot gate. It'll swing out. Again, right now, I'm not sure if I'm actually going to be trailering uh, gilts or sows up here to meet the boars or vice versa, still trying to figure out that flow, or if I'm just going to be walking them up. They are extremely motivated by food. So I could isolate one or two and walk them down the valley or up the valley as I, as I need to, I think. That's obviously a bold statement. But uh, that's why I'm not doing anything crazy with a load chute or anything like that just yet. 10-foot gate swings out. You can back the trailer up to this back corner if I'm unloading that way. Or, again, if I'm just walking up here um, with feed and, and lure them up, then I can swing a gate out and then maybe even make a temporary swing out gate here in front of the side-by-side -side to block the pig from chugging on up the valley. But... Again, in our situation, we're in the dead center of our property almost. It's really not a big deal if it swings wide. It's not like it's running out into traffic. Next trick <clears throat> will be to mill the boards. So put the sides on it, get our gate mounted, and then just drop our last electric line of pasture one or paddock one down here and get our gate on the back side of the bridge, uh, our switch gate in place, and we should be ready to move some boards. <laughs> All right, take care, everybody. <laughs>